Uh, hey everybody, welcome to Go Bold. My name is Jody Atariwala and I'm your host. And I'm joined today with... Senior Airman Aaron Welch from the F-35 demo team. Aaron, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. It's, uh, it's great to, to have you here and, uh, and it's wonderful to see the jet. Uh, it looks beautiful and nice blue sky. Oh yeah. Uh, so tell me a little bit about your motivation to serve uh, in the U.S. Air Force. Uh, where did you... Uh, where did you grow up and uh, how did you get interest in, in the Air Force specifically? So actually, uh, I was growing up, my father was in the United States Navy for 20 years. Uh, my sister did uh, approximately 18 years in the uh, United States Army. Uh, so I had like a, growing up, I knew about the military. Uh, I was very familiar with the skill set it would give me. Um, I personally wanted to join because my father did. Uh, my grandfather was in as well. Um, I wanted to learn the trades of electronics, so that's what I do. I'm avionics, so I work on the electronics, software, and wiring of the aircraft. Um, I just wanted to serve my country as well. Um, I'm a very patriotic person, so it feels good to uh, do my job. Right on, yeah. right on. And so I got to ask, you know, your dad was in the in the U.S. Navy. Uh, you joined the Air Force. What kind of uh, what kind of made you go that branch? Uh, good question, actually. <laughs> uh, See, I really wanted to go with, with the Navy. Uh, he was a sonar tech. He would work on the sonars of uh, uh, mine hunters uh, okay. and sub hunters. And I wanted to get the same practices he did with all the wiring and uh, vacuum tube technology, but we're way past that. Uh, instead, I wanted to work on newer aircraft and I wanted to work on the, uh, the A model specifically of the F-35. So I went with the Air Force instead because the U.S. Navy only has the Charlie model. Right, so. right. Yeah, no, it's it's super cool. Well, you know, I'm sure your dad's proud of you, regardless of the branch. And uh, and so now, uh, so you've been in the Air Force for how long now? I've been in for four and a half years now. Okay, four and a half years. And uh, now here you are as part of the F-35 demonstration team, and that's part of the Air Combat Command. Um, that's a pretty cool gig. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, uh, the hiring process was just, uh, uh, it disseminated from the, the demo team to three different uh, fighter squadrons in the uh, at Hill Air Force Base in Utah. Mm -hmm. And it said, hey, uh, if you got this certain uh, qualification, like have you been at Hill long enough? Have you worked on the jet long enough? And then uh, um, we went and had like about three different interviews and then we finally got selected for the team. So it was a pretty competitive thing because a lot of people want to go on, you know, the air shows and stuff like that. It's yeah. very different. Uh, very cool, unique uh, opportunity compared to what um, like what your regular job would be. Yeah, no yeah. kidding. And you get to travel the world doing this. Uh, yeah. You know, here we are in Abbotsford, British Columbia, but uh, you guys as a team travel all over to do this. So I guess the pace must be a pretty daunting schedule, I guess. Oh, absolutely. A very daunting turnover uh, because I don't have it as uh, rough as some of the others, but like uh, Bayo, Sergeant Peterson, our team chief, and Superintendent Sergeant Whalen. Uh, they all go on every show of the year. So around 30 shows for two years. Bayo's been doing 30 shows for like four years straight. Yeah. I have another avionics counterpart, actually two of them. So uh, we do split up shows evenly. So I only go, this is my second year, but I've had about 13 shows last year and 13 shows this year. Okay, all right. Well, if we hear some noise in the background, those are <laughs> sharing with me uh, just how big is the F-35 demo team? Like, I mean, just in general numbers. I'm not asking for specifics. Uh, so we actually borrow about three aircraft from our unit. Uh, our unit has around like 20-some uh, aircraft. So we specifically work on like three. Right. We bring two to a show, one for a spare, because it's a one, uh, one unit routine. Right. So uh, the full team is around 14, 15 people. Very small compared to the uh, Thunderbird team and the Snowbirds team. Right. Because, you know, it's just one jet flying. Sure. So uh, we only bring about eight people total for one show. Right. So, yeah, we just constantly swap out other people uh, in between shows for yeah. the next. Well, that's cool. As long as it, it, it kind of makes it, it spreads the wealth a little bit so everyone's mm -hmm. not 
totally just maxed out all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Right on. Well, you're kind enough to, to walk me through the F-35A. Uh, and as you mentioned, these jets are from Hill Air Force Base as part of the F-35 demo team. So tell me exactly what we're... High speed. Oh, here we come. Sorry about that. No, <laughs> it's all good. It adds a bit of flavor to this to this video. So, <laughs> so tell me a little bit about what we're gonna see as you walk us through the jet here. Sure. So, the F-35, uh, the Alpha variant. Uh, I believe its first flight was 2005. Uh, slowly but surely, it is pretty much taken over the United States fleet. Uh, there's, I believe, over 800 in the world now. Uh, the engine itself is the F-135. It's the most powerful engine. It's the uh, most powerful single-engine fighter in the world right now. Uh, it's probably the loudest thing you'll ever hear. Uh, <laughs> it is loud. It's got a beautiful yeah. uh, uh, howl to it, too. Yeah. It's got a very cool howl. Yep, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, you'll hear that during our demos if you ever come out to the air show. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And so we're going to start, I, I, if, if I've got it correct, we're going to start from the nose and kind of work our way back. Yep. And uh, I'll kind of just follow you, and if you could kind of point out the ins and outs of the F-35, that'd be great. Yeah, sure. So underneath this nose cone is a radar. Uh, it's uh, newer compared to our older radars in the fourth generation aircraft because this has no moving mechanical parts. Uh, it all has separate antennas, uh, uh, like multiple. Uh, they can all do different things. Uh, they can jam this, jam that on the ground. They can lock this target and then lock another target and send that information to their wingman all at the same time. So a very powerful radar compared to what uh, we have in our older inventory. Moving on into the, uh, underneath this lens here, we have a camera. Uh, there's actually six of these cameras around the aircraft. They're called the Distributed Aperture System. And what they do is they provide missile warning for the aircraft, as well as, uh, they produce uh, mid-wave infrared uh, uh, imagery that go through a computer and then up to your helmet. Uh, it will display on your helmet uh, if you want, and you can actually see through the aircraft uh, for that situational awareness. Uh, a key thing with this aircraft is situational awareness, and all these uh, sensors on the aircraft uh, really put it a, a step above the other older aircraft. Uh, underneath is the electrical optical targeting system. Uh, this is actually a, basically a, uh, the older sniper pods uh, consolidated and put into the interior of the aircraft. So no longer are they loaded on the wings of the aircraft or underneath the fuselage. It's all internal, which makes it easier on maintenance, as well as uh, more aerodynamic. So uh, this has a, a laser on it to guide laser-guided bombs to uh, air-to-ground targets, as well as uh, infrared search and track. Um, it's an IRST, so it will uh, scan the horizon, look for uh, thermal um, uh, uh, thermal returns, and it will lock er, the, your air-to-air -air, um, heat-seeking missile to that target, and the target will not know it's locked. So it's a very stealthy way of uh, uh, not being found. <laughs> that makes sense. Cool. Uh, heading back, the underneath this panel uh, is just our maintenance panel, uh, so we lift it and we uh, feel the aircraft uh, beneath there. Um, over here, back a while, <laughs> we actually have these uh, uh, hexagons under here, these uh, six hexagons. So these uh, hexagons are actually antennas. Uh, it's another 360 degree um, field of, uh, around the aircraft, so it's actually um, multi-array data link so it's like link 16 on the older aircraft however this is an f-35 specific antenna so it's a uh, it's like link 16 but way more powerful uh, that's about how i can elaborate on it it's uh because since i don't fly the thing um and um and Aaron, if you don't mind, would you just uh, be able to point out for us, um, like the the um, internal, uh, the fact that the F-35 being a fifth generation stealth aircraft, typically you carry the ordnance inside. So we kind of walked past that, but sure. uh, but just as a point of interest. Yeah, so underneath here, you see these doors that are actually rolled out right now. Uh, at back home station, we always have them rolled out for maintenance, uh, you know, to connect cooling air, anything for uh, that sort of business. But actually, the purpose uh, during flight is our weapon base. So we actually load air-to-air uh, uh, -air missiles underneath there. Um, no heat-seeking, but uh, radar-guided missiles. So like the uh, AIM-120s. 
Uh, we also put in the 2,000 pound bombs and I believe 1,000 pound. The actual uh, shape of the aircraft, if you look at the uh, silhouette, it's mostly a triangle. Uh, if you look at how everything, uh, if you look at how a radar would come at this aircraft, uh, everything's a little triangle and it's going to bounce off that uh, angle and go away from the uh, source. So it's not coming back. Uh, the aircraft as well is covered in a radar absorbent material uh, called low observable. Uh, this will actually help absorb the radar coming into the aircraft. One of the other aspects about this uh, F-35A, uh, Aaron, is that it is the only one of the three variants that actually has an internal cannon as well. Yeah, so actually let me take you around to that. So it's mounted up here on the left side, and people actually don't really uh, realize there's a gun on this aircraft because it's so well hidden. But it's actually shrouded underneath uh, right here. So that uh, panel will open up once the trigger is pulled. Uh, it'll it'll uh, reveal the uh, Gatling gun. And then we have the gas purge door that will open up and shoot the uh, gases out. So it actually has an internal capacity of 181 rounds. It's a 25 millimeter. So it's an intermediate round between what we currently have with the A10, which is 30 millimeter, and the F16, F15, which is 20 millimeter. Uh, so that way it can actually uh, complete both missions uh, more efficiently. So on the fly, uh, you'll, have, uh, be, you'll be tasked with air to ground, you'll be tasked with air to air. Uh, depending on the situation, you want that flexibility with that uh, cannon. So uh, it's uh, 181 rounds and it can go through in about five seconds. So extremely fast uh, rounds per minute. <laughs> Well, uh, Aaron, thank you so much for walking me around the F-35 and explaining some of the some of the nuances of the jet. I think people that have not been have not had the opportunity to see the F-35 yet, or uh, or be close to one, will get an appreciation for uh, for some of the capabilities. So, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us, and uh, yeah, we wish you success in your career. Yeah, uh, Canada should be getting these jets, I believe, three to five years, so I'm excited for you guys to actually uh, get your hands on them. Awesome. Thank you very much. Okay.